Hello, adventurers, and welcome to the MPS Show Reviews and Discussion Podcast. I am your GM, Norman Sanzo, and joining me today is the Paladin of the Dark Knight, Silver Quill. Take my plus ten rage. Uh, so that's the rule, right? Okay, um, roll a twenty. Uh, you got a five. You need a six. Anyway, also joining us is the Enchantress herself, Sapphire Heart Songs. Does this mean I'm an evil enchantress who does evil dances, and when you look into your into my eyes, you'll fall into trances? Probably. Is that a rule? I got a d20. <laughs> uh, so, in today's episode review, you can clearly tell that we're going to talk about Dungeons and Dragons. Yes, we're going to talk about the D&D game that's very popular, uh, done by Wizard of the Coast. Norman, I think we're supposed to be reviewing an episode. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. It's the same thing. It's under Hasbro. So anyway, um, in today's episode, we're really going to talk about Dungeons and Discord. So, yeah, Dungeons and Discord. Ah, this is a fun episode. Oh, yes. So this is season six, episode seventeen, uh, written by Nick Conflown, and well, this story goes like this: the main six goes on a trip to Yakistan and leaves the guy alone, and the guy have the quote unquote guy's night out, and with that we get insanity and a lot of boy problem. Yay, guy's night out. Guys, night out. With preposterous amounts of testosterone. Preposterone. Yeah, yeah. Football. Sports. Ball. Hi, I'm still here. To the corner. Uh, but, <laughs> uh, but besides that, oh wow. Mm, first impressions are in order. So let's see. Even is silver, odds are sapphire. So. What, are you crazy? No one's odder than I. Oh, uh, it's even. Silver, you go first. Okay, I, I will accept the dice roll on principle, but <laughs> I just want to know I'm the oddest one in this chat. All righty then. <laughs> I will not be challenged. I challenge so, you. <laughs> to a du- 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 duel. Anywho, Dungeons und Discord is a wonderful episode. I mean, one, it focuses on Spike and Big Macintosh, which is a rare event, mm-hmm. especially for Big Mac. This was the season of Spike as he had some of the best episodes, the best presentation. Uh, Finally, after three seasons of this poor little guy getting treated like garbage, he's finally being treated as a genuine character. And, you know, he's flawed, but he's fun. And Big Mac, with with that wonderful minimalist dialogue of his. And then Discord, who, of course, is back in form. Uh, How was it? What about Discord? He was he was antagonizing Twilight, but he really wasn't all that interesting. This one, we're finally back in form as he drives Big Mac and Spike crazy and, and puts their lives in danger. Oh, but if you think that the boys' night means that no girls are allowed, each of the main six has at least one hilarious moment. So they are by no means uh, forgotten in this story. And so it's a, it's a wonderful romp all around. My only regret, as I'll get into when we get into the meat of the story, I was kind of hoping we'd see more of this fantasy within fantasy world. Yeah, same here. And Seppi, what about you? Uh, there really isn't much I can really say that Silver um, didn't say already. I guess I didn't really feel a more or less like personal connection because with this episode, because, well... I've never played Dungeons and Dragons in my life, and you know I'm kind of not a boy. But other than that, even though even though it wasn't the main focus on this episode, I did enjoy watching it. Although I think my favorite character throughout that whole entire episode, in all honesty, was opposite Fluttershy. <laughs> you have no idea. Nick Conflone has become one of my favorite writers this season. He's done very excellent episodes despite the rocky start with um Silver's least favorite episode of all time. <laughs> I I need a reminder. My my least favorite episode uh, well, at least of season 5. Okay, yeah, they uh believe me. Nothing has quite dethroned the one Cantal- with the yaks. Oh. Oh, I don't. I didn't dislike that episode. I just didn't, don't like the yaks. Yeah, the episode okay, was good. Okay, well, either way, 
Big Con Sloan has, like, had a rocky start, but over the time, I've really enjoyed this episode, and this was his magnum opus so far within working with the MLP staff, in my opinion. Alrighty then. And as for me, wow, this one. This episode, hmm, well, this episode is kind of a dream come true. It's everything I want. It's geeky, nerdy, it has Spike and Big Mac interacting with each other. At least, it shows us what they do. If you remember back when, when I think either Applejack or Twilight said that Spike and Big Mac were going to watch Hoofball or something like that? Oh, that's uh, the cutie remark where Spike said he was just going to hang with Big Mac and watch Hoofball. Which, they never followed up on the fact that equestrians apparently do have TV. Well, that could be code for we're going to play D&D. <laughs> so, Maybe. Yeah, so it's one of those things where, okay, so this is what their quote-unquote Hoofball is, eh? Alright, alright. So... I just like this set. I just like this whole episode. Like, it got me giddy. And the way that Discord X in this one is, okay, we got old Discord back. And the way he acts with certain people changes. I'll save that for later, but I like this episode. But anywho, with first impressions aside, we should jump into the episode. And if you haven't watched it yet, Please do watch it first before continuing to listen to this. And if you have done listening, welcome back. So, we start off with Fluttershy packing. Hmm. She's packing an awful lot of warm clothes. I wonder where she's going. She's going just down the street. It turns out Pony- Ponyville's got one heck of a cold snap. Oh, yeah. Remember <laughs> season one, that huge mountain that the CMCs were climbing? Oh, yes, it was Titanic. It was epic. It was two feet high. I know. And snowy. <laughs> and snowy. Uh, the way the Patroponis are just derping. So, Fluttershy is packing her stuff, getting ready to leave for Yak Yakistan. And suddenly pops in Discord for his Thursday tea with Fluttershy. And, yeah, Fluttershy seems to forgot about this. And, well, <laughs> being the Lord of Chaos himself... Doesn't really care about her going. She wants her to stay and have tea. And, well, I think this court put a really fun spin on this, being opposite of Fluttershy. Mm. Well, guess what, Sassafras? <laughs> okay, I pl- know that's literally the best part in the whole episode. And I saw, like, the preview. It's like, okay, I know this is going to be a good episode because... Fluttershy literally just said that. <laughs> <laughs> well, guess what, Sassafras? You're going to get your flank over there right now before I kick your ass. Honestly, okay, Flutter- she didn't actually say that, but you know. Well, all I know is Fluttershy is best pony for alternate curse words. <laughs> oh, could you tell me what it is really? Like, what does that mean? What, what, what is it? I think Sassafras is a drink. Really? Sassafras, let me look that up real quick. I'm I'm not sure what that is either. But basically, it's it's by no means a curse word. But man, you say it with enough venom. <laughs> Sassafras is a plant. Yeah, but besides that, yeah. <laughs> Opposite Fluttershy. Okay, Silver. I need to ask, how do you feel about this one? Because you've mentioned before when the show uses Fluttershy to the extreme. What do you think about this one? Well, this one lasted exactly three seconds. Well, okay, maybe not exactly. But she's there and gone really fast. And it's actually funny. Mm, So does it make sense? It does. It does. It's not, I'm not up in arms over such a thing. Ah, all right. Because I was thinking like, hmm, will Silver be angry at this? Because he does mention that the show writers like to use the extreme. Either she's super shy or super violent. Well, Well, actually, she's been pretty balanced lately. Yeah, she's been a, she's been doing a lot better in the most recent seasons. We'll get to Buckball season and her own epic breakdown, the breakdown for which all other breakdowns will draw their inspiration. But honestly, I just thought Fluttershy was wonderful in this opening. Reverse Shy is funny because it's short and it's it's a quick punchy joke and then it's gone. But more interesting is when she tries to manipulate Discord. 
Oh god. Ah yes, and what is set manipulation? Because we all know that Discord is the master of manipulation and whatnots. So what is Fletishai's deal? How does she manipulate the manipulator? Oh, she basically just implies he's scared to interact with others. Mm. Unless you're scared. <laughs> Ooh. Oh, snap, girlfriend. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Please don't. Okay. <laughs> yes, he's back. Thank you. Uh, oh, what? We need Rob in here. Uh, what? But anywho, <laughs> uh, after intro, we see the train station. And oh my god, no, the train station leads to an active volcano. Oh no, train trip cancelled. Although, I gotta, I do have to call foul on Fluttershy in this case. What? The dear girl is trying to steal Applejack's eyebrow bit. That, that, that is grade A party foul. Well, I have to say, it's cool. Like, look at Fluttershy there. She's like, Discord, don't make me come up there. Sassafras, I will end you! <laughs> <laughs> but still, I like this Fluttershy. Fluttershy here is, to me, develop a bit more like way back when if you look at Fluttershy just the thought of her and Discord interacting is just unimmeasurable now she's in control you know who wears the pants in this relationship oh my 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 indeed and we're joined in by the main six or the main I uh, mean five so yay they're here they're uh, who they're getting excited to Head off to Yakistan. And as Silver likes to say, continuity. Pinkie Pie says that watch out for the Yeti. I was like, oh, so that's what that was. Yeah, I, I thought they had another name for it. Huh, well. all, all I know is I was like, oh, that thing is very scary. Oh, it's a Yeti. Huh. I had a blue Yeti once. I talked into it <laughs> many, many times. I wish I had a little blue Yeti. And then it broke down and crapped out on you, right? No, actually, I, I got a better microphone. I upgraded. Yes. There's a better microphone than the Yeti? Yes. Oh, yes, but yet it's a condenser microphone. Indeed. I also have a condenser microphone. Excellent. But we're yeah. getting we're, get, we're getting to the technical aspects, which we can talk about another day. Now, Applejack is, is just fun in this scene because she says, Okay, I'm in practically dressed. And ready to go confront Yaks. <laughs> <laughs> I'm ready to go confront Yaks. Meanwhile, Rarity is wearing... Uh, this is weird. Mm -hmm. She's not wearing a jacket. She's wearing a very poofy Russian hat, gloves, and some sort of uh, neck shawl. Mm -hmm. Shouldn't she be wearing a full... She and Rainbow should be wearing jackets. And Twilight. Twilight only has a scarf on. Twilight only has a scarf and ear earmuffs. Yeah, that that's what's really to be afraid of on a frozen tundra. Uh, if you take a look, see. I mean, most of the ponies here... I don't know. <laughs> this is something where I... By the way, was there this big animation error within that scene, too? Like, other than the clothing... With, like, Twilight's tail or something? Is there? Yeah, there was a, uh... Let me look it up. Like, Dungeons and Discord's animation there. Or... Oh, wow, well, we're going to really bring this up. Aren't we? Well, oh, yeah. I actually, there's a screenshot of it on, uh... On, uh, the MLP wiki. Mm -hmm. Her tail yeah. is coming... Her tail is coming out of Spike's tail. <laughs> it's mm. really... Yeah. Yeah, there's multiples. Mm. Yeah, seems like it. Although I, in truth, animation is hard. My hat goes off to to anyone who tackles this endeavor, let alone does it professionally. I know, but it's been there for like a minute. Yeah, don't look at it. Don't look at it. That's no. Just the, that's just the way things go. I, I know. But I'm still questioning how it got there in the first place. Well, you well you see, when a computer and a vector file love each other very much. <laughs> Uh, but anywho, uh, with, oh, with the pony saying their goodbyes and the main, well, with basically everybody knowing what 
Big Mac and Spike's plant are. <laughs> Even though they try to hide it. <laughs> yes. You can see the eye roll from Rarity. <laughs> Well, I wonder if she knows that uh, the prince, the damsel in distress, Princess Schmerity, exists. Yeah. <laughs> oh wow. Schmerity, oh god. Yeah. So, sounds like something I'd spend on toast. <laughs> yeah, with a bit of butter. So, anywho, the main six head off to Yak Yakistan and leaves the boys alone. Said boys are Discord, Big Mac, and. Sp- Spike and Spike and Big Mac here are talking about well, basically inviting Discord to the party, and yeah, Discord is just saying nope, not gonna hang out with you losers. I'm out of here. And Spike says something interesting. Unless you're afraid. So actually, he uses the exact same rhetoric as Fluttershy. <laughs> That's kind of trippy. Dis- apparently, everyone knows Discord's pride is his downfall. Oh, yep. Looks like it. Sounds like it. <laughs> well, they gotta find some way to keep him in check. So, after his sprite being challenged, he accepts the invitation. Even cancelling an appointment with... Who now again? I forgot what's the line. Celestia? What is L- it? L- L- and KK. Yeah, KK. Yeah. <laughs> Luna Although, and KK. What the hey is KK? Apparently his pet name for Celestia. Though... Truthfully, you're one extra K away from making Celestia <laughs> sound really, really wrong. Nope, we ain't gonna yeah. go there. Uh, so, oh, oh, I'm going there. The KKT, I don't know what he's thinking. Uh, no, but <laughs> who? Um, as night falls, the boys are ready for action, and Discord comes in with his whole. Mm, mm, what? How do I put this? Bugle horn and Are y'all ready for this? Come on and slam and welcome to the jam. Yeah. So anywho, um Okay, I wouldn't actually mind seeing uh Mike Michael Jordan try to keep up with my little pony. Oh wow. Uh I thought it was uh Charles Barkley now. Uh who knows and but anywho with Mimi's aside, Discord comes to the invitation and, well, he's ready for some party, even going to the quote-unquote um, man cave kind of place. This reminds me of the 70s show setup. Wait, what do well, you mean by 70s show? Oh, uh, you don't know that 70s show? I know, I know. I'm just like, wait, which one? Oh, wait, you mean when they're all, like, around the table? That's not a word! Okay. Oh, Safi, wait. What will we do with you, girl? What? Don't act like they never did that in the show. Oh, no, not that. It's just that I started to wonder if you've ever watched anything in your life, child. <laughs> yeah. But anywho. Yes, I've seen that 70s show. I just forget which reference is which, like, it's not reference. are you guys referring to? It's not reference. It's just the whole setting that they're in, playing charades. Uh, but anywho, so... With Spike rejecting Discord's plan for playing charades, they play another better adventure game. It's called Obliates and Ogres. Dun dun dun! Ah! And wow, when Discord knows to stay away from this. Well, the Discord, when his eyes bulge out and he's this look of terror, is like, yeah, a lot of people feel that way about <laughs> D&D their first time. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, well. But still, it's much fun. <coughs> and, well, as, as a standard game of Ogres and Oblias, and you know what, I'm going to just call it D&D, because D&D is much perfect for this. So anyway, with any game of D&D, you have a playmat, you have character sheets, you have a GM, and honestly, you should have more players. Like, one GM and one player is not going to have a good game. Maybe two or three. Who knows? If you have a game without a GM, you're going to have a bad time. <laughs> True that. Uh. Uh, okay, Sapphire's watched, so- so- Sapphire's South, Park. watched South Park. Okay, I've I just seen need to- South Park, my God. I just need to know, okay? I, I, I'm, I'm concerned. <laughs> I watch a lot of cartoons. Does that make you feel any better? <gasps> no, because they're all this newfangled stuff that I don't know about. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> these kids, these kids today. 
Mm-hmm. You want to know how messed up this all is? I just saw, for a project I'm working on, I saw a clip of the Powerpuff Girls. Oh, yeah, that one. Oh, yeah. The new one? Yeah, the new one's not bad. Uh, Why? I was, I was like, what? What in the hoo-ha am I watching? They they made a terrible new Powerpuff Girls reboot. It's not bad. I watch it. It ain't good either. Yeah. It ain't good. Yeah. That's all I'm going to say. But it gets better later on. Okay, I'm I, I'm derailing us, but I do want to just say uh, that's an argument I hear for a lot of shows now. It gets better later. Well, great. I watch shows that were fun in the moment. Yeah, true that too. Um, I'm noticing a trend here where most shows are doing the whole. Okay, we're going to do a set show here, see what's the problem, and try to fix it. And yeah, it seems to work sometimes, but most of the time, it's the first impression that matters. But I once again I derail yeah, the conversation. So anyway, because that's how I roll. Oh, let's see. Oh, that's a twelve. Off the rails to a crazy train. I'm going off the rails on a crazy, on a crazy train. Oh god. Nah, 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 nah. But anywho, we join our heroes as they, well, they start to play D and D despite explaining the whole shindig to Discord and. Um, telling them that there's a huge bad guy called Captain Squid. Squidward. The Squizzard. Yeah, the Squizzard. And showing the characters that they have. Spike's character is a uh, wizard dragon. And Big Mac here is an unicorn warrior class. And Discord doesn't seem to be impressed. Well, with Big Mac, I find this very interesting. We've seen him fantasize about being a princess. Mm-hmm. Now he now he's envisioning himself as a sword swinging champion, a the, a dark knight. Uh, a Big Mac. Wait, didn't Big Mac's dream start off a with Big him Mac. with a uh, unicorn heart? Yes, but once he realized he could go further, he didn't hesitate to become the princess uh. of apples. <laughs> Sailor Mac. Yay! He's the Glory. one named Sailor Mac. <laughs> he is the one, Sailor Mac. Damn. <laughs> uh. But anyway, uh, Discord tries to, well, basically he doesn't really enjoy this whole thing and decides to, well, not pay much attention to it. And Spike being, I don't know, antagonistic or what, but he created a character class for Discord. It's basically a ranger class, a rogue ranger, I think, probably. And yeah, they start the game and Discord does not really enjoy this, like, he does not enjoy this a lot and tries to sabotage the game by just doing silly things and just doing stuff. At the same time, too, Discord's just not really paying attention to the game. Well, it, uh, he's he's got other priorities. He wants to be the the wild and the wild and free spirited bachelor, mm. implying that he knows his days as a bachelor are numbered. Yeah, uh-huh. yeah, yeah. And the flutter cord shippers do cheer. Yay. <laughs> Yay. Okay, whatever. Uh, oh, oh, she's not a fan. Yeah, yeah. Meh, I'm okay yeah. with it. I'm not out to kill anyone like KP is, but you know. I'm well, I'm on the Celestia Cord shipper aspect. Well, but speaking of shipping, during during a little flash to a nightclub. Oh yeah. <laughs> Who knew that Equestria has like, you know what, there's main hat and there's going to be nightclubs. So this is an interesting nightclub like, feel. And it seems that this card has been hanging out with the mask. Or zoot suits. <laughs> but there's two things in this scene that really impress mm-hmm. me. One is uh, that <laughs> the musical sting that goes when a, a pony with heavy eyeshadow and a banana cutie mark walks yeah, by. Yeah. It's like... That's like the music just telling you, for a pony, she's considered really hot. <laughs> and B- oh, and Big, yeah. Mac, Big Mac takes note, which is the second time he's shown an interest in the opposite sex. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, Chiramac and Flutter Mac fans. Just, he's just not having that reaction. <laughs> but more importantly, that pony is inspired by uh, a historical figure named, who went by the name Josephine Baker. Ooh, who is she? Really? Yes. Josephine. She looks a bit like Eartha Kitt, like in her young years. Well, Josephine Baker was a, a nightclub dancer who wore this absurdist banana costume. 
And I don't mean yeah. like, you know, a full body banana. I am a banana. <laughs> no. No, she had like a skirt of bananas and it looked ridiculous. Okay. But Josephine Baker herself is a rather fascinating history figure. Because during World War II, she stopped performing and became an ambulance driver for the French Resistance. Oh. And after the war, she was a civil rights activist and basically refused to play at certain venues that were excluding other people. Uh, let's see. She That's was her. born in America, but, but moved to France, became a citizen. Uh, she is a rather exceptional person in history. And I think a good example that, that looks, intelligence, and integrity are not mutually exclusive. It's funny how just one background pony, or in this case, a foreground joke, can lead to a little greater appreciation of history, because I find this character absolutely intriguing. That is fascinating. The more you know. Honestly, I wouldn't have... <laughs> I'm, I'm not even going to say anything for the sake of silver. Oh, go ahead. Go, knock yourself out. I wouldn't I just... have known it unless you pointed it out, because I've never even heard of this person. Well, uh, nor had I, but Derpy Boru, in its infinite mean tasticness showed a comparison pick. And I was like, oh, who's this person? Why are they referencing them? I just found out that Coco Chanel was a Nazi SIP informant. Mm-hmm. Huh, I wonder if th- I wonder if this character in Coco Pamel will have will come to blows. Oh no! But still, that is an interesting uh, history fact, which Spike doesn't care because he's going to play D and D or the nightclub. <laughs> There's a time and place, Spike. Time and place. Oh, but he's doing it at a table where dogs are playing poker. <laughs> they're dogs, and they're playing poker. <laughs> <laughs> Oh god, dog is I have to point something out. I have to point something out. You notice the scruffy looking dog next to Spike? I'm assuming it's a, it's a pound puppies reference? Yes. He's the one played by Bender. Who's Bender? Um. Uh, John, um, Jay yeah, Jamero. John DiMaggio. I know the... Yeah. DiMaggio, yeah. that's it. I, I can never pronounce his last yeah. name correctly. John DiMaggio. So that's... Him and if you guys remember in the Hub Networks promo, it's the surprise but fun dog. What? I most the surprise but fun dog. I I, I don't know. I haven't seen Tom Puppies. Uh, <laughs> I I actually have seen a couple episodes. It, it's okay. It's nothing really that special to be honest. Yeah, but it's in the promo where he just talks to well, you know, one of the clips they use. It's like surprise but fun. Ah. Oh. Is that where he's talking to Pinky and said, don't tell anyone the secret? I don't know. Uh, but well, Spike doesn't really... We're getting, hung up. we're getting hung up here. Yep. But Spike doesn't seem to really want to play cards with dogs or have chocolate milkshake or even dancing. And they won, by the way, dancing. They, they won. So they want to... Spike and Big Mac still wants to play D&D. So Discord gives them a wish. They're playing D&D for realsies. And, well... They are their character, the mage, the with the warrior, and they have their skills. So that's cool. Yay! And look at Big Mac. He's all gruff now. People say he's the Skyrim pony. Dinklage, Peter Dinklage. Oh, wait, wrong series. Yep. But it you. <laughs> Before they could really have fun and explore, um, the Squizzard comes by with an army of skeleton ponies. Skeleton Cut ponies. Out. Oh, no, that's oh, okay. Sapphire, there's that's... a question for you. Do you know what he's referencing? Monty Python. Skeleton ponies. Da, da, Not da, da, even. Da, da. <laughs> that's right. You're not even close, sister. <laughs> but you're talking you about. Question, and I failed the answer. I I appreciate you. You made the attempt for which I for which I applaud you. But yes, it is a side of the olden ways when I know that I, I know obscure cartoons. <laughs> yes. Uh, Although I feel that the Squizzard should have been played <clears throat> by Weird Al. No, man. No more money. Oh. After a billion Mandy? <laughs> no. No. Um. He played a squid in there. He did an episode of Gravity Falls where he played this really obscure character for, like, another, like, D&D reference. He was basically the bad guy huh. for, uh, that episode. He that's, played that guy. 
But at the same time too, you have to remember with MLP budget, if they call in a big star, like especially if you have Delancey and Weirel here, whew, that budget is going through the roof. That's going to be one heck of an episode. Yeah, and especially for a throwaway character. Yeesh. We can dream. Yep, true, yeah. Let me dream. Is that a roll? Although that's is that a dice roll? <laughs> you know what? I probably I probably roll a uh, fumble. Okay, let's see if you score from or not. Oh yeah, you got an eight. You need a ten. So fumble. You know, I think you're just making these numbers up. <laughs> there was a dice roll. I hear a dice roll, but you know what? I've only got you to to tell me what what it is. True. I find the I find the dubious. I won't lie. I question. Norbert, you seem like such an innocent soul, but then I wonder what fallow thoughts lie beneath those hidden depths. Do you have Sunset's power? Uh, thankfully not. <laughs> but anywho, we continue on with, well, our heroes getting their took a kick. And they're retreating, using the Monty Python method of surviving. Run away! Run away! Run away! Run away! Uh, it works. Quick, get the holy hand grenade of Antia. It works. <laughs> so... They they hide. They even push a D6 onto, well, the cave entrance, but they fail because the Squizzard catch them and everything that gets, um, with every attack they get hit by, it hurts. For reals. Ouch. For realsies. Yeah. I, I, this is reminding me of Yu-Gi-Oh! When um, they have this duel this where whenever they lose life points, they get hurt for reals. No. Uh, oh yes, until you have so, episodes. So like the shadow games, or well, even even in uh even in regular games, they always seem to flinch whenever they're struck <laughs> directly. Yeah. yeah, but at the same time, when shadow games come into play, you lose your soul. No, 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 no. Welcome, to, will... welcome to the shadow realm, bubble realm. <laughs> yeah. Silence. Uh, but anywho, this uh. Sp- Spike gets angry at Discord and, well, tells Discord straight up that they feel sorry for him. That's why they invited him. And, well, his pride got hurt and, well, he just pulls away. And using the Shia LaBeouf method of, I'm not famous. We're not worthy! We're not worthy! I like this scene. I mean, it's kind of a classic stumbling block for groups. You have someone new. And you don't want to disrupt the dynamic. You don't want to lose the, what you've built up with your friends. But at the same time, you don't want to exclude someone. Yep. And so I, I really enjoyed sort of the dilemma that Spike and uh, and Big Mac were going through. So that was a good yeah. time. Good time. And with this, Discord leaves the castle and goes home, I guess. And well, with that, Spike felt really bad and guilty about it. But still, they have their D&D game. So, yay, we continue on. But it's just not the same. After they experience that whole awesome event of being in a real game, that's cool. Technically, they're LARPing. They're LARPing, yeah, but they don't, so fun. they don't have people sh- screaming, Get a job, hippies! <laughs> <laughs> oh, yep. But anywho, um, after a bit of, well... Discussion with Big Mac, they invite Discord back and told him that, okay, you have to play nice with us, but we want you to do the whole real thing, like the whole LARPing thing. We want that. that that's cool. That's the most fun we had in this game. So Discord grants their wish and they have an awesome time. And then we get, we get the funny Twilight reference. Let's just close the door, back away and pretend we never, ever, ever <laughs> saw this. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. To which Rainbow and Pinky are like, oh, forget that, sister. They just go for it. And I love it. Yep. And Rainbow Dash has the best costume. Although part of me wonders, what would Rarity have transformed into if she'd crossed that boundary? A freak, either a mage or, you know, Princess Schmerity. Yeah, I'm thinking the Schmerity. Interesting that you said that because a while back... Hasbro and a company called, um, I, I forgot the company name. Mm, I, sh- I, I, well, long story short, they did this whole exclusive t-shirt thing where, oh yeah, um, boosters is something to do with a charity event thing and Hasbro kind of did, um, a t-shirt print of the D&D and it says friendship and magic 
It's how we roll. I bought the shirt and I like it. Well, yeah, I see, I see. actually, a lot less. <laughs> Pinkie Pie's costume went from a uh, brave that one guy from that one movie that I've never actually seen, but I hear all the references to uh, whatever he me, is Sappy. now in this episode. You're killing me here. I know I am, and I love it. She went from Obelix to Tacona and the Boat Barbarian. <laughs> yeah, but funny that you mentioned that because, well, it's there. And Fluttershy is a drew, dru- druid. And yeah, she's got the biggest wings. So, I think she's trying to upstage Twilight. <laughs> yep. Applejack the Ranger, so yeah, it's all cool. Um, I'll try and put a link into the show notes for this one because... Uh, if you're interested in looking at Sid's shirt design, it's there. But yeah, funny that you mention it because yeah, that's how Hasbro envisioned them. Rarity's costume is the best, though. I think she is a uh, bard, probably. I'm not 100 percent sure. Either way, it'd be better than crossing the boundary, winding up in a princess dress and locked in a tower. Because it's always a tower. I don't know why. It's, they always need a tower. Look. Just because I'm an evil sorcerer who's kidnapped the princess of land doesn't mean I can't give her a, a decent view. Yep. <laughs> uh, but still, with Pinkie Pie and Rainbow Dash joining the adventure, we have a five-man crew, or five-character crew. Yay! And they leap into action. And, and... Yes, I did. I especially love Legolas' uh, Discord. <laughs> Discord. Yeah. <laughs> Legacord. Like. Ah, this is so cool. I wish everybody just jumped in and have fun. Well, apparently apparently only a handful really appreciate Guy's Night for what it is. Twilight's still like, back away slowly, don't make eye contact. <laughs> yeah, because this is nerd stuff. You. Yeah, and as we all know, Twilight's never into nerd stuff. Oh, perish, perish the thought. What did Will say before? There's nerds and geeks. I think it? so, yeah. Yeah, I forgot the thing. But yeah, it's there. And does anybody notice how freakishly Discord's left claw is? Well, yeah, he, he, that was the fumble. He cast a spell and it, and his hand got turned into a, was it a radish? Oh, yeah. Okay, okay, okay. So, uh, yeah, that makes sense now. All right. And I do appreciate them sticking to it. <laughs> well, give, I'll give Discord this. He's into character. He's a method actor. Yep. Uh, and with that, episode's over. It's fun times. Mm-hmm. And with that, final thoughts. Silver, what do you think about this episode? Oh, it's thoroughly enjoyable start to finish. I, I will say, I kind of wish we could have seen more of this fantasy world. Here's the thing. Lots of TV shows do the fantasy game becomes reality. The newest version of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles had an episode devoted entirely to that. Oh, yeah, I remember that episode. Yeah, where the, where, where the turtles went LARPing. <laughs> uh... Oh, God. Yeah, it's as terrifying as it sounds. Yep. <laughs> But it was, this was a lot of fun. Discord kept things fresh. Big Macintosh and Spike, who are often neglected characters, they got a much better showing. And it's just fun all around. And there is, there is the argument that this shows kids, you know, don't, don't knock it until you've tried it. Don't, uh, exclude someone just because you're uncomfortable. Good stuff can happen if you are open to the opportunity. True that. That's about it. That's about it for me. I mean, the, I can't say there's anything bad, except maybe that the moral gets a little lost in, in the humor. But that seems like a fun fun trade-off to me. All right. And, Seppi, what about you? I liked it, even though I don't get most of the references. Your turn. Wow. All right. And as for me, this episode was a lot of fun from start to end, because, well... It shows a few things that I enjoy, like Dungeons and Dragons. I do love hearing stories about games being played and whatnot, and crazy adventures, because each adventure is different. Each player does a lot of things, and it's just special. And this is their story about how a group of misfits gets together and, well, save the day and have a great time. And I do like how Discords interact with the second tier characters like Spike and Big Mac and knowing what Big Mac 
was before and how he ended up, up now is pretty interesting. And I do wonder why Big Mac doesn't really say a lot in character. Like, he's, he's D&D character. I would, I do wonder why. But, ah, uh, well, it's still fun. And what can I say? It's entertaining. But here's the ultimate question. Do you know the legend of the gazebo? <laughs> I think we told the story before. Oh, but The legend I don't think... of the gazebo. Oh, God. Yeah, but I don't you, think we you... told it on air. Silver, you remember the story? Uh, it's easily found. But this was perhaps the greatest D&D chronicled event. Wild gazebo. Just a quick search. All right. The tale of Eric and the dread gazebo. So we have Eric, the, the hearty D&D player. And his friend Ed, Ed says, you see a well-groomed garden in the middle on a small hill. You see a gazebo. A gazebo? What color is it? (laughs) It's white, Eric. How far away is it? About 50 yards. How big is it? It's about 30 feet across, 15 foot high, with a pointed top. I use my saw to detect good on it. It's not good, Eric. It's a gazebo. I call out to it. It won't answer. It's a gazebo. Hmm. I sheath my sword and draw my bows and arrows. Does it respond in any way? No, Eric. It's a gazebo. I shoot it with my bow. What happened? There is now a gazebo with an arrow sticking out of it. Wasn't it wounded? Of course not, Eric. It's a gazebo. (laughs) But that was a plus three arrow. It's a gazebo, Eric. A gazebo. If you really want to destroy it, you could try to chop it with an axe, I suppose. Or you could burn it. But I don't know why anyone would try. It's a bleeping gazebo. (laughs) I run away. Ugh, it's too late. <laughs> You've awakened the gazebo. It catches you and eats you. <laughs> oh, well, maybe I'll use a fire-using maid so I can avenge my paladin. <laughs> and that's the end of the story. <laughs> oh, God. It's, uh, it's hilarious. The, it's hilarious no matter how many times you read it. Yep. Yeah. And this is... And this is why I like D&D stories, because of that kind of story. Well, honestly, all stories come down to the human element. Sports tales on their own, without the human element, are exceptionally boring. I would like to know how a gazebo could actually eat someone, though, even though it's just a friggin' building. Uh, The GM just, like, gave up and just, like, uh, screw this attack, done. Someone, someone needs to friggin' animate a gazebo eating someone oh, alive. I want to. Sure gen- I out genuinely there. want to know how that would go down. Oh wow! Well. But Silver, if you're interested in reading funny D and D stories, here have this one. It's the Adventure of Crawd. Crawd, by Crawd, by Crawd. I think we're good with one story. All right, then. Let's but see. just in case you Let's... want to. Oh, this one's a little long. But they're segmented out. Okay. Oh well. Uh, we can we can hold this in reserve for another time, eh? Yeah. It's yes. okay. It's just something if you want to read because I laugh at one joke. Oh god. Oh, yesterday I had a giggle fit. <laughs> uh, but anywho, yes. Um, those are our opinions on Sid's show, and that's why I like the indie. <laughs> uh, so. Next week, uh, next week, what are we going to do? Because uh, I think I did mention before that we're going to hold off on the comics till they reach the number 45 and 35 for each respective comic. Yes, indeed. So, perhaps we move on to the next episode? Ooh, next episode. <laughs> well, I wish I could play the Madden song here, but because of copyright, we can't. But you can just imagine it in your head, because next week, we are going to talk about Buckball Season! Yay! Woo! Hopefully the Indians have already won the World Series by then, because it's like the week after they just won and got bleh. Yay! So... Baseball! <laughs> 
It's not football. We're making the wrong references. We're I nerds. Don't know. Oh, I know that Jordan played baseball once. It didn't turn out too well. Okay, Norman, I'm going to strangle you even though I don't like sports. What? <laughs> wrong reference, god dang it! Okay. But Until anyway, next who's... time! I have been Norman Sanzo. I am the Silver Queen. I am the Sapphire Heart Zone. And as our adventure ends, we roll a d20 and see how it, this ending goes. Huh, a 17. Not bad. So anyway, we'll see you guys next week. See ya. I roll a plus 10 goodbye. I roll plus 20 bye-bye. I don't know. You're supposed to say adios. Yeah. <laughs> I like to keep you guessing. And now I roll a critical music sting. And result comes in. Oh no, it's a critical. I roll old man that yells at cloud. So in other words, silver. Me! Me!